right now, the day's biggest news stories from a Vegas perspective. This is the Vegas Take with Sharp and Shapiro. All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take. Sharp and Shapiro rolling out on a Friday, baby. Oh, yeah. Lot to get to. As I mentioned, uh, the band Arlie Peace is going to be joining us in hour number three. That's going to be a good time. It's going to be fun. we got a lot of stuff in the news to talk about, including some more stuff in regards to Matt Lauer. And it's not good news for him. We'll get to that coming up here in just a little bit. And, of course, we have the news coming up here at the bottom of the hour with John Schaefer. But before we get to all that stuff, you've heard about the situation with the NBA in China. Let me just give you, in layman's terms, briefly what's been going on. So I actually know Daryl Morey personally. He is the... General manager of the Houston Rockets. He's a controversial figure. At times he says and does some controversial things, but he's a pretty good general manager. I beat his ass in a ping pong tournament in the NBA Summer League. That's how I know the guy. I thought I would brag about that. I beat him very badly in front of many other owners and general managers of NBA teams all across the country. So that was a lot of fun. But anyway, that's how I got to know him. He's a weird guy. He's a little strange, but I always thought him to be a nice guy. So... Daryl Morey goes on social media the other day, and basically he defends Hong Kong, the situation uh, brewing between Hong Kong and China. And it couldn't have come at a worse time because right now there are NBA preseason games in China. So people in China were up in arms about this comment, and then the NBA got very defensive about it because, and in my opinion, it's all about money, right? China, just because all these games are being played in the United States. China is a big part of the, of the NBA. There's a lot of uh, basketball fans in China. We'll, we'll put it this way. There's a, there, the NBA has like a $14.5 billion TV deal, which is absolutely massive. Mm-hmm. And China is responsible for about $4 billion of that. Yeah. Huge Lakers fans out there, huge Rockets fans out there because of Yao Ming. Yeah, no question. So, so this has taken a mind of its own, really, and, and this story is becoming bigger and bigger. So Donald Trump uh, has commented about this. And the reason why he's commenting about this is because Steve Kerr and Greg Popovich have been huge anti-Trump guys. And they seem to bash Trump every opportunity they get. I asked Steve Kerr some questions, you know, when he was here for uh, it was the USA basketball team. And Kerr went off on Trump. And the comments he made when I asked made national news. But Here's where I agree with Donald Trump, and he is criticizing those guys because he says, look, they'll be the first people to criticize me in the United States of America, but why are they so silent on this issue? And he's right. They have been pretty silent when it comes to this issue. So this is Donald Trump in his own words. Well, the NBA is a different thing. I mean, I watch uh, this guy, Steve Kerr, and he was like a little boy. He was so scared to be even answering the question. He couldn't answer the question. He was shaking. Oh, oh I don't know. I don't know. He didn't know how to answer the question. And he'll talk about the United States very badly. I watched Popovich, sort of the same thing, but he didn't look quite as scared, actually. I watched the way that, like, Kerr, Popovich, and some of the others were pandering to China, and yet to our own country, they don't, it's like they don't respect it. Okay, I I can't believe I'm saying this, J.D. It's hard to argue with. Mark it down. I agree 150% with Donald Trump. If you are going to go after Donald Trump and you're going to be this political NBA coach, you need to talk about this issue. You need to talk about what Daryl Morey said. Why don't you criticize Daryl Morey if you don't agree with Daryl Morey? Or if you don't like China's response, why don't you criticize China? But don't you criticize Donald Trump every single day. And then all of a sudden you ask a question that involves the NBA in China and you're silent on it. It it, I think that's cowardly. Do you agree with that? It's cowardly, right? No, it's it's definitely pandering. Yeah, because they believe that they're a, a lot of a lot of NBA basketball fans, a lot of Golden State Warriors fans, a lot of Rockets fans mm-hmm. are anti-Trump, and and it's and it's clear that and it's possible they're asked to be political mm-hmm. by the NBA or or by a major multimedia organizations. You don't know, so it's it's very very interesting that they are kind of mum mums the word on this particular issue, but they're so over aggressive as far as attacking Donald Trump, any right. chance they can. But here's the thing, though. Why do you have to call Steve Kerr a little boy? I wish, uh, and I agree with what Donald Trump is saying. If you want to call them, I guess, uh, you know, it's cowardly, but a little boy. I, I think and what like, he was saying was that Steve Kerr looks a little younger. 
than Greg Popovich was so, but, with what she does. It, it, was kind, just, it, was, it was kind of a backhanded compliment to him for having a young looking face. Isn't it possible that he could just stick to the subject matter and just because I agree with his message and what he's saying. But I don't know why he has to say those sort of weird things. Just say, listen, they're the first people to attack me and and to attack, uh, you know, the United States of America if they don't like a policy or something I say. But yet when it comes to the NBA in China, they don't say anything. Okay, Mr. Mr. President, couldn't say it any better. I agree. I don't know why he has to call Steve Kerr a little boy. But anyway, this is something else that's bothering me. So James Harden and Russell Westbrook, they're out there in China, right? They're playing they're, they're a bunch of preseason games being played out there. And a reporter chooses to ask them a question about this. And you know what? Damn right. I would have asked them the same question. I think this reporter, whoever she is, did a fantastic job. So I want you to hear this exchange and the way it was handled in regards to this subject. Um, the NBA has always been a league that prides itself on its player and its coaches being able to speak out openly about political and societal affairs. I just wonder after the events of this week and the fallout we've seen, whether you would both feel differently about speaking out in that way in future. Um, it's a legitimate question. This is an event that's happened this week during during the NBA. It, this particular question has not been answered. James. And then James just sits there and doesn't answer the question. Uh, excuse me, we're just we're just taking basketball questions right now. Excuse me, no, 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 no. This has already been yeah. answered. We're just taking basketball questions. Shut up, you idiot. Get out of there. I, I don't put that blame on Harden though. He just, I think it's an organizational thing. I think they decided, and obviously whoever is handling the press for the Houston Rockets decided that they were going to answer those questions. The NBA put out a statement by one of their spokespeople that apologized for that exchange, and I give them credit for that. That woman should be fired. How can you not mention that? And, and it's not like they're in Houston. They are in China. Right. That woman should be fired. She's a moron. And by the way, I thought that reporter handed that question well, very well. And she's doing her job. Absolutely. That, and you know what? That, her, her job is to ask relevant questions. And she's right because that question has not been asked yet. That direct question that she asked has not been asked yet. And it was a very good question. And you know what? I'm going to say something about James Harden and Russell Westbrook here real quickly. Uh, look, they're unbelievable basketball players. They seem like decent guys. They don't break the law. They seem like pretty good role models. Okay? I have a lot of respect for them. But they're cowards for not answering the question. You don't have to uh, badmouth the NBA to answer the question. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to make your league look bad by answering the question. You could have criticized well, Daryl Morey. I, mean, I think that they're, they're not really that, – that's the type of question that a lawyer would answer. They're not really polished with questions like that. So I don't really blame them for not being overly aggressive and excited or you know, to quick, quick to answer that question. And they didn't really have much of an opportunity. There was about a four-second delay there. I mean – I think that's that's a bit of a a stretch there, Brian. Again, these these guys aren't seasoned. They're they're not. No, they're not, see, not, I disagree. Not, I, what, 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 how, how are they going to answer that question? How, how how will they answer that question? Let me give to an not example. Incriminate themselves. Let me give and, an example. The NBA. Okay, let me give an example. We're not talking about the twelfth man off the bench. We're talking about role models. I understand. These guys have a gazillion followers on Twitter. These guys are role models for kids. Okay, it's kind of like when Kyrie Irving, the, the 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 moron that is Kyrie Irving, said that the Earth is flat. You can't say stuff like that because you have a lot of kids that look up to you, and you're a moron well, when you not, say stuff yeah, like he's that. He's not exactly a geologist either. Does doesn't have to be you don't have to be a geolo geologist to say that the earth is flat and to understand that the earth is round you just have to have an IQ over 25 okay it was dumb he was dumb to make that statement now I'm not calling James Harden and Russell Westbrook dumb by any stretch of the imagination but I am saying it was a little bit cowardly that they listen you don't have to badmouth the well, NBA how do you think LeBron James would answer that question LeBron James uh, because he is very political he's yeah. very outspoken well, he answered he, he says anything he can First of all, what do you if think you, he would say? if you don't agree with what Daryl Morey said, then there's nothing wrong with saying that. And just say, listen, I disagree with what Daryl Morey said. Also, the timing of it was very bad. If you think it's okay what Daryl Morey said and you're siding with Hong Kong, the people of Hong Kong, then, then say that. And say, listen, we respect I mean, the people of China. Wait, hold on, let me finish. Say, listen, we respect the people of China. Uh, we love that they are such great fans of what we do. With that being said, when it comes to this specific issue, I side with Daryl Morey and what he said. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. And, uh, you know, listen, if you're going to pan, what are you gonna, what's next? What are you going to pander to, Kim Jong-un? What's next? I'm not saying that the NBA is going to be playing games in North Korea, but you understand what I'm trying to say. You have to say what you feel is right and do it in an intelligent it, it, it way. It just comes down to this. Hong Kong's population is 7.3 million. Mm-hmm. China's How'd you know that? Did you just look that up? China's population <laughs> is nearly 
two billion. I understand that. that. That's what it comes down to. And I'm actually shocked that Daryl Morey said what he did, considering that he is a general manager of one of the top, the, the one of the top valued NBA franchises that has a giant following in China. Daryl uh, Morey I'm shocked. He said what he said. In my interactions with Daryl Morey, and I actually had a brief conversation with him at NBA Summer League not that long ago. He's just a really weird, strange guy. Uh, he's not dumb. He's not dumb at all, and he's a pretty damn good general manager too, but he's a little weird. I'm, I'm guessing that part of that, like maybe .01% of, of the viewership in, in that agreement is coming from Hong Kong. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be minuscule in the grand scheme of things. Do you disagree with what I said, though? When, when, I have, when you have James Harden and Russell Westbrook up there, they don't have to badmouth the NBA. You don't even have to bring up Daryl Morey. You can say something that is politically correct, but say something. Don't just sit there with your mouth shut. The, the, say something, guys. She answered the question. Obviously, it was an organizational thing, like I said, and they didn't have much time to respond. But really, how are you going to respond? They're not seasoned in questions like this. It's not like the reporter said, hey, I think your general manager effed up. I think he's an idiot. What do you think about Daryl Morey? It's not like she asked an inappropriate question. Okay? Hey, look, sometimes reporters... Ask bad questions, and I'll give you an example. <laughs> and it involves the WNBA and the Las Vegas Aces when the All Star Game was here. Let me give you a brief story, and I'm not going to say who did it because he's actually a friend. And uh, but there is a local reporter who was uh, at a press conference with Liz Cambage. And if you don't know who Liz Cambage is, she's a star on the Las Vegas Aces. She happens to be extremely tall. So this reporter puts his hand up and asks a question. Keep in mind, this is the NBA All Star Weekend. Probably should be talking about basketball. And he says, "Is it?" and I'm paraphrasing here, but the question was along the lines of, do you think, is it difficult for you to date men with your height? It, it was something like that. It was that type of question. And I didn't think Liz Cambage handled it very well, but she went nuts. She lost her mind. She had people, I want to know who, what your name is. She had some people take a picture of this guy's credential, trying to get him kicked out. She lost her mind. Now, while I don't think she handled it well i think a, a good response was yeah next question if she didn't like the question ask next question or say that's eh, not a problem for me next question let's talk basketball but she, she lost her mind and I, and I thought i think she's a little bit of a diva but with that being said to her defense it was a dumb question to ask first of all she's been asked about her height her all her life well, don't clearly. don't ask her about her personal life and dating so listen i remember when uh there was a i believe it was a, uh, a golden state warriors Press conference. But, I mean, and oh, let, me, let me just tell the story. Uh, Golden State Warriors press conference. Draymond Green was asked a question, uh, and this idiot reporter from another country asked, uh, uh, this is when the flooding was going on, and he said something along the lines of, hey, Draymond, uh, every time there's a, there's a major flood, you know, you, you drain threes. It was something like that. It was just totally inappropriate. And, and that was a situation where Draymond did the right thing. He should have attacked that reporter because it was a dumb question. Look, sometimes, my point being, sometimes reporters ask dumb questions. And you know what? They need to be called out on that because it hurts our profession. When it hurts our credibility when you got a bunch of morons in some of these press conferences. And trust me, it happens more than anything in boxing fights. You've got so many morons in those press conferences and some of these uh, post uh, fights. I don't know how some of these idiots get credentials. The point being, it happens all the time. This is not one of those situations. Going back to the China situation, this woman asked a very legitimate question, and it deserved a proper response. While I'm glad the NBA apologized, how about answering the question? How about oh, hold another press conference, and if it's a true apology, allow that reporter to ask that question again to James Hart, Russell Westbrook, then the apology will be accepted. Does Liz Cambage date men? I, I have no comment on that, and I don't care. I don't, I don't know, and I don't care. I have no idea. What does that have to do with it? I just said no. I don't care. Oh, I wasn't sure. Well, why don't you ask her next press conference? Why don't you ask her what, her, what, what if she likes men or women? That that go over there, very well. There is a specific orientation pattern that exists in the WNBA. Here's what I think you should and, do. And so that's what that question is based. Next on. time the Aces have availability, I think it's just a wonderful idea to ask Liz Cambage if she likes men or women. I'm sure she wouldn't mind that question at all. I'm sure it would go over very well. I wonder how long it would take for your credential to be ripped apart from your neck. <laughs> Excuse me, Liz. Excuse me, Liz. Do you, you like men or women ha, ha, or both? Have you actually thought about that, though? Would it be difficult to date at six foot eight when you're a woman? I mean, have, like, have you thought about that, Brian? For, for her? Well, number one, I'm not six eight, so I really don't care right, what right. her personal but life if, is I mean, or their I mean, dating life. Number one, 
Have I thought about that? Like for example, I'm 6'3". I have thought right. the other way around because I know some friends of mine, including our producer, who's about four feet tall, Steiner, uh, I feel for him. I really do. I do. No, but in, in all seriousness, I've thought the other way. I, I mean, wouldn't that difficult, be difficult, though? I think if you're a short man, I think it's more difficult because women usually don't like to date men who are shorter than them. So you don't think it's difficult for an extremely tall? I mean, Liz, I Liz, Liz Cambage is probably, there, there might be I think 150 mo- women in the United States that are that height. I, I think most men would find that, not not all, but a lot of men would find that very intimidating. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, listen, uh, there's a lot of guys out there that are extremely tall, and I, I would imagine that's difficult for them to date short women. Uh, I, I'm sure that's tough. But, but the point I'm trying to make is, when you're doing a press conference and you're there to talk basketball and somebody asks you about your dating life, your personal life, that's probably not a question that you should ask. It was a mistake. Speaking of that, we're about to have a consistent guest. His name is Luca Fury. He is a six foot nine. He's probably the best MMA UFC sports handicapper in the country. He'll be he'll be joining us uh, in the next couple. Well, of weeks. Well, good because you could ask him uh, how difficult it is dating. Absolutely, you, you could ask him those very questions. Listen, this situation between China and the NBA is not going away. And I understand that the NBA commissioner spoke out about it, and he said, listen, we're going to deal with these consequences while we allow free speech. Here's where I disagree with him. You know, yes, you have free speech. You have the First Amendment. You have free speech. However, that doesn't mean that your employer cannot tell you what you can or cannot say in certain situations. And I think if you're the general manager of a basketball team, you shouldn't be criticizing China at the same time where the NBA is playing preseason games there. Now, if you want to criticize China after that, I just thought the timing of what he did was wrong. It was bad timing. Well, and, and, and we know why the, the NBA is playing the games there. It's just to drum up interest, to, to maintain ratings and viewership throughout the regular season. That's the only reason why they're playing games there is because of that TV deal. And it's not like you're playing in a country where they don't care about basketball. I Absolutely mean, China not. is... It, they are huge basketball fans in that country, and there's so many NBA players like Stefan Marbury, like Jimmer Fredette, who have made enormous amounts of money in China, and maybe their NBA career didn't pan out well, but they are making enormous amounts of money playing in China. But I don't think, you know, sadly, in this country and around the world, when there's money involved, you know, that changes things. It changes freedom of speech. It changes maybe things you can or cannot say. With that being said, I still think that the players should be allowed to speak their mind. The coaches should be allowed to speak their mind. But going back to what Donald Trump did, what he said, be consistent, Steve Kerr, or as he calls him, a little boy. Be consistent, Greg Popovich. If you're going to be outspoken about what? politics, be consistent. Right. If, if you're being political, be, be political about everything, not just about me. That's my problem with Steve Kerr and Greg Popovich. I like the fact that they're opinionated. I like the fact, and this has nothing to do with whether they like or, or don't like Donald Trump. I like the fact, but I was really disappointed in both of them over the last several days. You're, they're usually the first people to speak about stuff like this, but if it hurts, if they think it might hurt their product, they don't talk about it. Well, I have a problem with that. Don't criticize the NRA then. The NRA, you know, doesn't come forward and say, oh, my God, these mass shootings are terrible. Let's do something about gun legislation. Why? Because it'll hurt their model. It'll hurt their product. Steve Kerr did the exact same thing. Did he not? He decided not to speak out about this situation because, make no mistake about it, it hurts the NBA product, or it could hurt the NBA product. To me, that is cowardly. I was very disappointed. Uh, whether he's a little boy or not, that I, I was very disappointed with it. This story is not going away. And, and I, here's something else, though, that I, well, I'll, I'll mention uh, how Donald Trump and Prince are in the same subject this morning. I'll explain what, th- what that's all about coming up here in a little bit also. More Matt Lauer news. That's right. Matt Lauer back in the news again, and trust me, it is not good. Also, we have audio of Donald Trump trashing uh, Ilhan Omar uh, while taunting a protester being escorted out of the arena when he spoke yesterday. We've got some sound um, from that last night as well. So we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about Donald Trump's campaign stop last night. He certainly said some interesting and controversial things about Joe Biden. We'll get to that also. The Matt Lauer information coming up, and I did mention this coming up in hour number three. The band Our Lady Peace is going to be joining us in studio. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to talk to these guys. Been a big fan of millions of albums they've sold throughout the world, so it's going to be a lot of fun to catch up with them coming up in hour number three. We'll take a quick break. Be back right after this. You're listening to The Vegas Take right here on the all-new 101.5 FM, 720 AM. K Don. 